May I inquire, Your Honor? Go ahead. Lamont Johnson, called by the government, having been first duly sworn, was examined and testified as follows. Thank you. Please have a seat. Your name again is? Lamont Johnson. Can you spell that? L-A-M-O-N-T-J-O-H-N-S-O-N. Thank you. Mr. Johnson, if you could pull yourself closer to the microphone or pull the microphone closer to you. And can you tell us how old you are? 43 years old. Where did you grow up? In Brooklyn, New York. Whereabouts in Brooklyn, New York? Lafayette Gardens. You don't have to bend over every time you talk. You can move an inch or two closer. If you want to sit back and relax, we'll hear you sufficiently with that. Okay. Okay. Where's Lafayette Gardens? It's in bed Brooklyn. I'm going to show you, within Lafayette Gardens, what apartment did you live in? I lived in two apartments in Lafayette Gardens. What was the first? The first apartment was 470 DeKalb, apartment 5F. And the second? 433 Lafayette, apartment 6F. When did you move to 433, apartment 6F? Around 1986. How long did you live there? 1986 to 2001. I'm going to show you what's in evidence, and you could see it on your screen there to the right, as Government Exhibit 101. If you use your finger, you can press on the screen and tell us where is 433 Lafayette. I can zoom in if it's hard to. Okay, you've indicated, and 470, where you first lived before 1986? All right. Do you have a nickname? Yes, I do. What's your nickname? Sambo. Where does that come from? It comes from my middle name. My middle name is Sam, and it also comes from the movie Rambo. Growing up in Lafayette Gardens, who did you live with? My mother, father, sisters, and brothers. Do you have any children? Yes, I do. How many kids do you have? Five. What's their age range? My youngest is 15. My oldest is 23. Where did you sleep last night, Mr. Johnson? In prison, in jail. How long have you been in jail? Nine years, nine months. So is that since 2005? Yes. What are you in jail for? I'm in jail for racketeering, distribution of crack cocaine, distribution of heroin, distribution of marijuana, and for murder. Okay, and I'm going to start with racketeering. What does racketeering mean to you? It means, it means that I got together with others that I sold narcotics and that I was organized with them to do other things. And you said you were convicted of murder. Who did you, whose murder did you get convicted of? I was convicted of killing Stephen Brewer. Did you do that alone or with other people? I did it with other people. Who are those people? Me, myself, Boo, Wayno, Ron K and Fruit Quan Bell. What year did that happen? 1992. All right, now you said that racketeering means you committed these crimes with other people. Did you commit them with a group? Yes, I did. And what was the name of that group? Cash Money Brothers. Did you call the group by any other name? Yes. What was that? CMB. How long did you consider yourself a member of the CMB? About 10, 12 years. Beginning in what year? 1991. Where did the CMB primarily operate? In Bedford-Stuyvesant, mostly in Lafayette Gardens. Was there a leader of the Cash Money Brothers? Yes, there was. Who was that? Damian Hardy. Does he have a nickname? Yes. What's his nickname? 
world. Do you see world today in court? Yes, I do. Can you tell us what he's wearing, an article of clothing he's wearing? He's wearing a plaid shirt. Your Honor, he has identified Mr. Hardy. All right, the record will reflect that. Thank you very much. Do you see anybody else in the court who is a member of the Cash Money Brothers? Yes, I do. Who is that? eBay. And what's eBay wearing today? He's got a sky blue shirt. All right, indicating the defendant, Your Honor. The record will so reflect the defendant has been identified. Do you know eBay's real name? No, I don't. You don't know eBay's real name? I think it's Eric Moore. Thank you, Your Honor. More or less, how many people were in the Cash Money Brothers? I want to say about 20. And did that change? 25. Did that change or did that stay the same over time? It changed. Where did the name Cash Money Brothers come from? It came from the movie New Jack City. Who made that name up? We got it from the movie. All right, when did you begin calling yourselves the Cash Money Brothers? The end of 91, the end of 1991. Was there any connection between your group and what the movie New Jack City portrayed? Yes. What were some of the similarities? Some of the similarities were we sold crack cocaine and we used vials. We used crack vials. You're saying vial. What is a crack vial? A crack vial is like a little plastic bottle with a top, with a top on it. How big is a crack vial that you sold? Maybe the size of like a fingernail. How did somebody become a member of the CMB? You became a member of CMB by, you know, you showed dedication, you sold crack, you hung out with each other, you showed hunger like you wanted to be a part of it. And was there anyone who could be a member of CMB without the approval of its leader world? No, you couldn't. Did you all wear any kind of jewelry to signify your membership in the group? Yes, we did. What did you wear? We wore diamond earrings, two earrings in the left ear. Did world have any brothers or sisters that were in CMB? Just one. Who was that? Myron Hardy. Does he have a nickname? Yes. What's his nickname? Wise. If I may approach your honor, you may. I'm going to show you now, Mr. Johnson, Government Exhibit 23. Who is that? That's Myron Hardy. That's Wise. Was Wise older or younger than World? He was older. By how much? A few years. Were you closer in age to World or closer in age to Wise? I was closer in age to Wise. And what about in relationship? Were you closer with World or closer to Wise? I was closer to Wise. And in CMB, what was the relationship between World and Wise? They were brothers, you know, they were partners, they were close. And in terms of being partners, were they on the same level? Yes. Was there a difference in the leadership that made one of them more of a leader at certain times and the other one more of a leader at certain times? No. Okay, would there, if one of them was incarcerated, for example, what sort of position would that give to the other? If one was incarcerated, the position of the other one was to, he was the boss, he was the leader, he was the controller, he controlled everything. All right, was everybody in the group the same age, around the same age? No. Was there a divide in age between the people in the group? Yes, there was. And what was that? We had older members and younger members. 
And in terms of relationships to world or wise, was there also a sort of divide? Yes. What was that? The older members roughly hung out in with wise and the younger members, the younger members were with world. Okay. Now you told us that world was the leader of the group. Did other members have different roles? Oh, yes. What were some of those roles people played in the group? Why don't you first tell us what eBay's role was? eBay? Uh-huh. eBay's role was that, you know, he was a worker. He was somebody who held it down, somebody who was a lieutenant. He was like an enforcer. Okay, so let's just define those for the jury. You said he was a worker. What does that mean? A worker was someone who sold crack cocaine and someone who sold it for a fee, someone who sold it for the organization. And you said a lieutenant. What is a lieutenant? A lieutenant was someone who they gave out bombs, they collected money, they picked up money, they handed out crack, and they looked out for people. Now, you told us what is a vial. What is a bomb? A bomb is a... It was several vials that was in, like, a baggie. I would have to say it was several cracks inside one bag. All right. And how much typically, how many vials of crack is typically inside of one bomb? I would say about 30. How much would that cost typically? We sold $3 vials. So times it by 30, it would be like $99. All right. And when you say you sold $3 vials, did you call those $3 vials by any other name? Yes. What was that? We called them trays. So you told us that a worker is someone who sells drugs and makes a fee. How do they make that fee? Oh, they made that fee by selling a bomb. How would the money come from that bomb? The pay was inside the bomb. Can you explain that to the jury, please? We sell our bombs and we would take our pay out of it. So if we had to give back $100, we would have $130 in each bomb. So we could have our $30 and then we would have to pay, give back the $100 to the lieutenant. All right. And so the lieutenant, after the lieutenant collected that money, where would that money go? It went to the lieutenant. The lieutenant would have to give the money to the boss. And who would that be? World. Now, you said that eBay was a person that also held it down. What do you mean when you say held it down? He stayed out there, you know. He stayed on the strip or he stayed on the turf. You know, he looked out for the people that was selling for bombs or, you know, he protected us. And was there any sort of anything that he used to do that? Yes. What was that? A gun. You also said that eBay was an enforcer. What's an enforcer? Someone who you could say was called upon, you know, to protect someone who would be, we could depend on. All right, so before you got the bombs and sold the vials to customers, where did the drugs come from? Drugs came from cocaine, from buying cocaine. Who would generally buy the cocaine? World. Where would World generally buy the cocaine? He would buy it from different locations, I would say, like supermarkets or like drug trades, like places where they sell large quantities of cocaine. And a supermarket, not in the aisle of a supermarket, I'm imagining. No. Okay, where? I would say like in the back of a supermarket or outside, like in an area where they sold cocaine. And we would like go over to the house and go to build it and purchase it. Did you go sometimes with World? No, I didn't. Now, once World would purchase the crack, would he bring it back to Lafayette Gardens? Yes. What would happen once it came back to Lafayette Gardens? How would it get into the vials that you sold in LG? We had to cook it. How do you go about cooking crack? You would add water and ice and baking soda, and you would put it in a kettle for like 
what you call like a whistler and we would cook the crack. And after it was cooked, were there people that took care of cooking it? Oh, yes. Were there people that took care of bagging it up after it was cooked? Yes. Okay, and generally, who did you sell to? Generally, we sold to customers, people who we know, people who lived in the community, people who lived in the buildings that we lived in. Were those people that were buying small quantities or large quantities of crack cocaine? Small quantities, but a lot of it. For use or for redistribution? For use. Okay, and on a typical day, what would you say that you would sell? How much either in money or in vials? Whatever is easier for you to quantify. I would say from the 2700 and 1500 daily. Okay, now you told us about eBay's role. I want to go through some of the other names, okay? I'm going to start with Government Exhibit 2. Can you tell me who that is? That's eBay. Okay, that's eBay. Government Exhibit 345? That's Diesel. And who is Diesel? Diesel was a member of CMB. What was his role? He was a lieutenant. During what time period? Like 1991 to like 1995 to 1996? Government exhibit number five? That's Boo. What was Boo's role? He was a boss. When you say he was a boss, was he a boss in the same way that World or Wise was a boss? No, he wasn't. What was the difference? He was under them, but he was over Diesel. He was someone who was there in the beginning, someone who started when the crew started. He was there. Your Honor, could I ask? You're pretty close together. Just keep the voices up so the rest of us can hear. Sure. All right, so keep your voice up. Government Exhibit 8? That's Trub. What was Trub's role? He was a lieutenant, someone who used to be a worker, someone who worked to sell to becoming a lieutenant. Over what time period? Like 1991 to like 1999? Government exhibit number nine? That's myself. What was your role? I was a boss. I mean, excuse me, I was a worker who became a lieutenant and I worked from 1991 to 1999 to 2000. We're going to go through it in more detail, but when you say you worked all that time, what period of time would you consider yourself a lieutenant? Oh, I would say from 1999 to 2001. Government Exhibit 40? That's Phil. What was Phil's role? He was the bagger, someone who bagged up the crack. Government Exhibit 6? That's Broman, Keith. How would you spell Broman? You would say B-R-O-M-A-N. Okay, and Keith you said? Yes. Can you spell that for me, please? B-R-O-M-A-N. Okay. And Keith, do you know his real name? Yes. What's his name? I only know his first name is Keith. And his role? He was a worker who became a lieutenant, someone who held it down. Government Exhibit 14? That's DJ. What's DJ's role? DJ was a worker and someone who was a bagger. Government Exhibit 10? That's Jimbo. What was Jimbo's role? He was a lieutenant, someone who, he dropped bombs, he collected money, he was someone who was always there with us. When you say us, who are you talking about? The guys who were the workers. 24? That's Hastings, Stack. What was Stack's role? Stack was a lieutenant, an enforcer, someone who, you called on him when you needed help. He was someone who was there for us. He was there in the beginning, too. 
Where is he now? He's dead. Government Exhibit 7? That's Popsy. What was Popsy's role? He was a worker who became a lieutenant, who was someone who was there in the beginning. 56? That's Porto. And who is Porto? What was his role? He was an enforcer. Do you know his real name? No, I don't. 41? That's Miss Bunny. Who is Miss Bunny? She was someone who was a worker, someone who allowed us to bag up crack in her home. Was she a drug user? Yes, she was. Government Exhibit 39? That's Plum. Who is Plum? She was a worker. She was a... Someone who was... She used to work with us. Selling drugs? Yes, she did. Government Exhibit 12? That's Big Gems. And who is Big Gems? That's, um... Someone who... He was that of an enforcer. Government Exhibit 11? That's Tion. Who is Tion? He was a worker. 42? That's KB. And who is KB? He was a worker. Did KB have any kind of relationship with anyone else in CMB? Yes. Who was that? His brother. Who is his brother? Trub. And in terms of Trub and KB, did they grow up living in the same place as anybody else? Yes, they did. Who was that? They grew up in the same building as myself. Did anyone else from CMB live with them? Yes, they did. Who was that? Their mother, their older brothers and sisters, and eBay. And in CMB, who lived with them? Oh, eBay. Okay, and Government Exhibit 4? That's Thor. Who was Thor? He was a boss, an enforcer. He was someone who was... He grew up with us. Okay, and we don't have a photograph of Mousy and Peter Rabbit on this board, but who was Mousy? Well, Mousy was someone who he dealt with us. He was a young guy. He kind of left the crew at a younger age, you know. He was there for us and there with us in the beginning, but he left and he stopped dealing with us when he was young. And Peter Rabbit? Oh, he was CMB. He was someone that was with us and he got killed. You also earlier mentioned a person who was named Fruit Quan Bailey. Who was he? Oh, he was CMB, a friend of ours. Okay. And what about a person by the name of Dante? He was someone who was down with us. He was cool. He was like considered a worker, considered a shooter.